Hello. Well, today I uh, want to talk about a film that came out 20 years ago. Um, and I'm not necessarily going to talk uh, about the general plot because I'm sure the title of the video as well as the film itself, people typically already have or know the old, you know, the story uh, about this film, and that is the Passion of the Christ. Now, a lot has been said about certain controversies with this film. Um, I'm not getting into that, um, nor any controversies regarding, like, you know, Mel Gibson, for instance. Um, people obviously have their feelings about uh, him, and uh, I'm just going to keep it about the movie, because I would just say that this is an excellent film. I did not see this in the theater when it came out, but uh, when it came on DVD, I did watch it. Um, I was raised Christian. Uh, I, I still am Christian, but, you know, I know not everybody is, or everybody has different, you know, religion, or perhaps certain, you know, people are a certain, you know, specific kind of Christian, like, you know, you know, Catholic, or Protestant, and, you know, Methodist, and all of that, as well as, you know, being Jewish, or um, Buddhist, uh, Hindu, uh, you know, uh, Islam, uh, or those who are, uh, you know, atheist or agnostic, um, wherever you are religious wise, uh, it's your own, you know, it's your own, uh, uh, specific belief system. You have your own beliefs, regardless if you put that into higher power or not, um, and I would just say, uh, watching this 20 years ago was, you know, I was just blown away. Obviously, it was very, you know, violent due to the fact that what happens with Jesus, um, played by Jim Caviezel, does an excellent job. Everybody in this film does. Monica uh, Bellucci, Mia Morgus, <clears throat> Morgan Stern, Sergio Rubini and everybody in this film uh, does a great job. You know, obviously it chronicles um, Jesus after, you know, when he's arrested as well as Judas's uh, betrayal of him for money and uh, inner cuts at various points to certain moments where, you know, prior, it's like you know, Jesus was building a table for a rich man and uh you know it'd be a fairly high table which we he would have to uh build uh, appropriate chairs which you know his mother seeing this said it'll never catch on which is uh, a very you know funny moment um in a film that doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, uh light moments like that but you know uh, moments like that are nice and see him you know preaching to his followers and how he, what he has said prior comes true. Like, you know, you, you know, Peter will, you know, three times will like basically say like he doesn't know him and that comes to fruition and, um, and various things uh, that Jesus says will happen, do happen. You know, he's like, he's, he's son of God is God. And, um, Asks God as he's being uh, nailed to the cross and put up to be, you know, being uh, crucified to, uh, you know, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. And uh, if you know the story, it's a very good uh, 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 version a very good adaptation of what happened and of course a lot of people aren't totally happy with the various graphic violence but you know that's what happens to Jesus um, it's 
probably good to at least depict it as realistic as can be, as opposed to, you know, some versions might be kind of trying to tone it down. This Blu-ray I have, you know, has two discs. One Blu-ray disc, which is the first disc, which has the movie, and then the second disc, which is in, which is a DVD, has a lot of the like documentary, like the making of the Passion of the Christ, exclusive documentary, uh, legacy in this, uh, the legacy historical, uh, cultural retrospective of the crucifixion, the deleted scenes as well as on the Blu-ray disc, aside from the original theatrical version there's a version edited for uh graphic depictions so i guess in a way that'd be like the television version basically you know if it was on <clears throat> if this played on you know a normal uh, cable channel for instance you know some of the uh, more graphic uh instances of him being beaten and everything you know that couldn't just, you know, fly on any kind of channel. So, you know, film would have to be edited. Uh, and um, there's an enhanced viewing mode with uh, biblical footnotes, which I did not watch <laughs> with. But because I haven't watched this in uh, quite a while. And I figured, being that this uh, is the 20th anniversary... Um, I should probably rewatch it again, and it's still a very, uh, an excellent film. Um, whether or not you, you believe Jesus was the son of God or not, <laughs> um, watching this movie is, is very well done. It's a well-made film, well-acted film. Um, <clears throat> and if you know the story, you know just how accurate it is. Uh, to the you know the Bible and uh, what's documented and everything of that sort. So this is a very well done film. Um, you know sometimes certain films about you know a topic like this you know biblical they do you know they. <clears throat> You know, they embellish. They don't tell it how it is. And in some cases, it's because perhaps the time the film was made, they couldn't perhaps make it as accurately as they otherwise would have loved to. You know, perhaps because of a technology like the Ten Commandments, for instance. You know, even though the special effects, for instance, are excellent, and uh, that's a very well-made film, though people have pointed out certain inaccuracies where this film is usually looked at as one of the more faithful adaptations regarding, uh, uh, you know, the Bible and the, the biblical uh, you know, figure of Jesus and everything of the sort. Um, one thing is that um, a sequel is being made and has been in the works for years, you know, uh, the resurrection of Christ, because at the end of this movie, he spoiler alert, he is he is he resur he's he is alive after saying how after like three days he will rise, and um, basically what Jesus said uh, happens, uh, particularly after he's you know he dies and then he comes back, um, but you know a, a lot of people. Well, of course, up to that point, saying he's, he's just blasphemy. He's just saying he's the son of God, and he is just a blasphemer, and therefore needs to be punished. He needs to be crucified, and yeah, it's it's very well done, a very well done film, and um, I'm curious as to how. The sequel will be because apparently it's going to be a multi part sequel. There's Resurrection of the Christ, um, chapter one, and then chapter two. I believe they're doing this back to those back to back, um, but don't quote me. I, I can only imagine because it's taken so long for the, anything to actually happen. 
um, with this film or this sequel now. So whether or not this will actually occur back-to-back uh, -back filming, because I would imagine that the, during this time, uh, Mel Gibson was writing quite a lot. And so what was supposed to just be one sequel, I guess will be two. At least that I know of. And um, he does have like another, I believe that they are, you know, because you're supposed to do Lethal Weapon 5. Um, but I believe that's postponed a bit so that uh, the sequel to this can be made finally after all these years. Um, yeah, he... Of course, you know, uh, Mel Gibson had his uh, own problems. You know, again, don't want to get into that, but, you know, he had his own issues where after the success of this film, as well as then Apocalypto a couple years later, he wasn't able to get as many high profile, you know, parts and able to get certain some films of his made. But, you know, over the years, like with Hacksaw Ridge, for instance, uh, in terms of his directorial efforts, you know, he is able to be back on top again and, uh, so, hopefully, you know, you'll be able to get the, the, the sequels to this film made. And then do, like, you know, Lethal Weapon 5. And I know a lot of people are like, ah, Lethal Weapon 5. But that's been a film that's been in development for years. Um, and um, I'm with Mel Gibson behind the director's chair for that movie, because he never directed any of them prior, obviously. That was all Richard Donner, but um, he passed. He has since passed away, unfortunately. But yeah, and I only bring that up because for a while it looked look like Lethal Weapon Five will be made first, and then the sequels. You know, the you know, the Resurrection of Christ, uh, chapters one and two. But uh, from what I've read, it looks like the Resurrection of Christ will be done first and Jim Caviezel will be back and I believe um, many of the people who were in this film will return um, <clears throat> though not too many details has um, <clears throat> been forthcoming because uh, you know Bill Gibson wants to keep uh, things under wrap which, you know, I can understand, you know, even though the, the stories of, uh, you know, Jesus being, you know, uh, like, you know, arrested and beaten, crucified, dying, and then resurrecting uh, has been, you know, documented uh, already and has been told. It'll be interesting just to see uh, how Mel Gibson will continue from this film. Um, you know, I guess on one hand, people might say, we don't necessarily need a sequel to this, and I can definitely get it, you know. Even though we know the story, at the same time, this film, you know, it's uh, uh, very well done, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what all happens, at least in the uh, through the eye of Mel Gibson directing, what that will all entail. So, hopefully, it'll be good um, when it's all finished. But we shall all see whenever that comes out. Um, I don't know. I read somewhere it'll be out next year. Like filming this year, that will be out next. The first part will be out next year, but I don't know because so many things happen. Um, you know, there's a lot of you know, there's you know, development hell exists for a uh, reason. You know, that is separate from actual hell, but you know, you know, development hell. You know, some movies just can't get off the ground for one reason or another. Um, and for a while, it was because Mel Gibson. Uh, wasn't somebody who was getting a lot of jobs in because his company, uh, 
Icon Productions, um, uh, primarily through him, is, you know, it funds their own, uh, like, he funds his own movies, such as this, and, you know, you're not supposed to fund your own movies with your own money, but Mel Gibson primarily does, and that's what his company does, so, because of that, and even though he, no doubt, was very well off, at the same time, you know, him doing certain acting gigs and then that he liked and then doing saving up enough money to then do movies like this after a while he wasn't able to get the probably the enough uh acting jobs to where he could then be like all right yeah but i absolutely have enough money to then do the sequel to this film so unfortunately this movie sequels have uh taken about 20 years to actually get off the ground after the release of this film so you know better late than never but you know it might be nice if they if it was made sooner but hey sometimes movies take a long time even perhaps longer than they should be uh, to get made um again this is an excellent movie and um yeah the cinematography as it points out here you know stunning cinematography it is excellent cinematography is excellent the music is excellent um this whole movie is amazing from beginning to end it's just on like a technical level acting it just is excellent um again regardless if you whether or not you're religious beliefs your stance on religion this is an excellent movie um and it's one that i think is worth watching um whether or not again you believe what happens here again that's up to that's all uh on an individual basis i'm not trying to shove anything in with you know religion or anything i just thought you know it's 20 years old i kind of thought about doing this around Easter time anyway, but like a, like a month. <laughs> uh, about a month uh, behind, but hey, you know, as I said earlier, better late than never. Um, uh, this is a fantastic film. Um, Neil Gibson actually, you know, he co-wrote this. Um, and I point that out because he doesn't really write movies much, you know. Whenever he's directed uh, prior, such as like Braveheart, uh, he produced and acted in it, and then he produced and just directed uh, Hacksaw Ridge. But he, you know, doesn't write a whole lot. So, but of course, you know, he's a very devout Catholic, so it does make sense that he would write this film. You know, like if there's any film that he is going to write. You know, Passion of the Christ would be it. Um, the language <clears throat> in here, you know, it's spoken. It's not. It's not in English. You know, you have to read it in English or other subtitles like Korean, Spanish, Cantonese, Mandarin, Tagalog, uh, Brazilian, uh, Portuguese. You know, the language is. Here you get you know, Emmerich, Hebrew, Latin. Um, so, if you happen to have not seen this film before, um, and if you've actually watched all the way through, which would be something to watch it, watch it video about <laughs> the specific uh, film, having not seen it, but made it all the way to the end, um, well, that's something to... Uh, make sure you are aware of at least I, hindsight I probably should have mentioned that from the beginning and then again I'm kind of going off the impression that people who've watched this or know about this movie have probably seen it you know they not only have they know of the story of Jesus but they know of what happened <laughs> you, you know and I've watched this film <laughs> but kind of not making too much sense it's getting late here so but i wanted to just say this uh because 
it's an excellent movie and it's worth rewatching every so often. But be be aware of the graphic violence that happens and the blood. So if you're not very, uh, uh, if you're not one for uh, those things, uh, this movie has it. So yeah, and I don't know if it's streaming anywhere, but if it is, I doubt you'll be able to watch the uh, version that's edited for the graphic depictions. Um, I didn't watch that again, but so I've never actually seen this. Every time I've watched this, it's always been the theatrical version. So I don't know what that's like. I don't know. I've I've never actually thought about ever watching that version. Maybe I should one day. Maybe that'll be an experience. Uh, regardless, um, I hope you're all uh, doing well. Hope you're all having a excellent day hope you all uh, have had a great week and i hope you all have a great weekend please take care and uh yeah just have a great day